good afternoon children welcome to today's class uh, before we start our uh, today's class i want to uh, tell you something uh, maybe you have some uh, queries regarding portion and all uh, so now no need to worry about that you just uh, as you are doing the classes regularly you just uh, uh, keep on doing that and whatever things are uh, whatever chapters uh, are being taught you just uh, follow those things that will be enough okay and uh, portion and all uh, that will be before the exam only it will be uh, informed okay so whatever things uh, i'm uh, teaching you right now you just uh, follow those okay and the worksheets uh, today again uh, we will continue with the um, with chapter three, uh, and uh, then uh, as usual we will be going for the worksheet and all. Okay, so let's start our today's class. elements compounds and mixtures so today separation of liquid liquid mixture these are the points to be discussed separation of liquid liquid mixture separation of liquid gas mixture then separation of gas gas mixtures and then principle of separation these four points we are going to discuss today first separation of liquid liquid mixtures Chromatography. Uh, about this, uh, we did in our previous class, uh, but then also I think uh, we are having some doubt on this. So uh, let us uh, just do it once again. Okay. So chromatography. This technique we will be using to separate liquid liquid mixture where the properties of the substances, properties of the components of the mixtures are very similar okay so here in this uh, there are two phases one is a uh, stationary phase another is mobile phase so here in chromatography we will be taking a paper uh, in paper chromatography we will be taking a paper you can see here in the first figure this is the paper uh, here we can take a filter paper and here we will be taking the mixture that is ink spot okay and we will be dipping this paper in a in uh, in the water that will be act here water will act as mobile phase okay this is the solvent here so uh, as the component of the ink uh, or the mixture uh, that will uh, get dissolved in the solvent that is water separate uh, means uh, in different manner means the uh, it's uh, all the components are not equally soluble in water so the um, substances or the components which are more uh, soluble they will rise first through this paper and the components which are less soluble uh, they will left behind means the rate of the uh, absorption will be less for them so slowly the water will rise up along with the components of the mixture okay and accordingly according to their uh, solubility in the sol uh, in the solvent uh, we will be getting the spots here okay the substance or the component which is more soluble it that will be making this spot and the component which will be less soluble least soluble in the solvent that will make the make this spot okay so in this manner we can separate uh, components of dye or uh, uh, the components of any mixture which is having uh, which are having very similar properties okay so what are the advantages of chromatography from chromatographic technique we can uh, separate a uh, very uh, small quantity of the substance can be separated okay uh, components with very similar physical and chemical properties can be separated this is the uh, main thing why we will be uh, using this chromatography technique. Uh, 
it is uh, it identifies the different constituent of a mixture this is there and it also helps in quantitative estimation of components of a mixture quantitative estimation means how much uh, substance is there if the amount is very less then we can uh, that less amount of substance also we can uh, identify or we can uh, calculate estimate from the uh, from this chromatographic technique so these are the advantages of this technique Next, what are the application? Here, chromatography can be used to separate colors in a dye. In, in a dye, different colors may be there, so that colors can be separated through this. Drugs from blood, if uh, in a blood strain, any drug is there, any medicine or any drug is mixed with that in blood, then that also can be separated by this technique, by this method and from natural colors we can separate the pigments okay and uh, secondly we can purify many industrial products so these are the application of chromatography we can say next we will be moving to liquid gas mixture separation so liquid gas mixture in uh, any liquid if any gas is uh, mixed together then we can by heating or boiling we can separate those because on heating the solubility of the gas will decrease that means they will be less soluble uh, a very common example we can uh, see at our home regularly if we boil some water then in uh, water drinking water we can see uh, in drinking water uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide and uh, these gases are mixed air bubbles air is uh, mixed with the uh, normal water or drinking water we can say so if we boil then air in air that means the, the carbon dioxide and oxygen which is the they are mixed in the water uh, normal water drinking water that will come uh, come out okay you can see the bubbles so uh, through the bubbles the gases which are mixed the dissolved gases that are mixed that will come out from this water that's why uh, the boiled water is having a flat taste it's not having a good taste we can say we don't like to uh, drink boiled water because uh, as uh, after boiling the water uh, will be losing its uh, uh, gases dissolved gases like carbon dioxide oxygen which will add some test to the gas uh, to the water so after boiling uh, the gases will uh, not be there mixed with the uh, water and it, it tests flat okay so boiling is the process to separate liquid gas mixture next separation of gas gas mixture diffusion you know what is diffusion diffusion is to spread out or to uh, intermixing of uh, different particles uh, generally uh, gaseous particles for them uh, we will see this uh, diffusion process for uh, liquid also the diffusion will be there but for gaseous substances diffusion can be seen very uh, properly we can say okay uh, now here you can see this uh, there are two type of gases suppose uh, hydrogen and oxygen these two gases are there you know, so this gases a as hydrogen is light in weight than oxygen so we can uh, assume that this a uh, this white uh, this uh, red balls or red uh, atoms these are uh, of hydrogen okay this uh, hydrogen gas this a uh, denoted uh, balls okay molecules hydrogen molecules you can say and b this these black balls these are oxygen okay now as hydrogen is lighter than oxygen so that will diffuse fast okay so through the membrane and as the size of a is uh, less so they can pass through this they can pass through the membrane and they can diffuse faster but this black color balls or the oxygen gas that will left behind 
as it cannot get through this membrane okay so it is not uh, this b or the black color ball these are not permeable uh, it cannot pass through this membrane okay so this by diffusion process we can uh, say the gas mixture to gas mixture uh, that can be separated in this manner and the gas which is light in weight which is lighter that will diffuse faster okay so by this process we can separate gas gas mixture by diffusion next by solvent extraction this is another technique to separate uh, two gases uh, suppose uh, if we take the example of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is soluble in water but carbon monoxide is very much less soluble in water it's a uh, it's uh, almost insoluble in water we can say okay so if we suppose here in this uh, here we have taken both the gases carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide this red ones are carbon dioxide and the black ones are carbon monoxide suppose Okay, now see this uh, here we will be adding a solvent suppose for uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide if we add water in it then the carbon dioxide that is that will dissolve in water okay that will dissolve in water but carbon monoxide will remain undissolved here okay so here you can see this black color balls this will uh, we will take as carbon dioxide so that will dissolve in this solvent so it will get mixed with this solvent and the other one here we have taken carbon monoxide that will left behind so that can be separated in this manner here if we uh, open the gap then the carbon monoxide along with this, uh, this solvent that will come down that can uh, we can separate in this beaker and carbon dioxide which is very much soluble in water which is uh, more soluble in water we can say that will be with the next solvent with the solvent which we have added to separate this two okay so in this manner we can separate two gases where one gas is uh more soluble in the particular solvent and another gas is less soluble in that particular solvent we can take the example of ammonia as well ammonia is very much soluble in water so if we add water as a solvent then ammonia will get dissolved in a solvent uh, in that uh, in the water and it, uh, it will get soluble and the other gas whatever uh, gas we have taken along with ammonia that will left behind so in this manner uh, as ammonia will come to a solution form so we can easily separate ammonia from the other gas which will be insoluble in water next liquefaction this is another technique uh, so here uh, there are few gases uh, actually all gases can be liqui uh, liquefiable but easily we can liquefy uh, few gases like carbon dioxide nitrogen that can be easily liquefiable okay so uh, this So uh, look, you can see this. Uh, if we pressurize the gas, then actually for uh, to liquefy the gases, we have to uh, apply some conditions. We have to lower the temperature and we have to apply pressure. Now this is different. The temperature and the pressure is different for different gases. The gases which are easily liquefiable, that will be. gas which is easily liquefiable that will be uh, uh, that we can liquefy easily 
okay so uh, the other gas which is not easily uh, which cannot be liquefied liquefied easily which is not liquefiable in that manner in that sense easily so that will be left behind so if we take carbon dioxide and any other gas which is not uh, if we compare uh, between carbon dioxide and nitrogen then carbon dioxide is easily liquefiable than nitrogen so the mixture of this two if we take the mixture of carbon dioxide and nitrogen in that manner then if we apply pressure and if we lower the temperature carbon dioxide will become uh, it will become liquid okay now the carbon dioxide can be uh, separated as it becomes liquid and the other gas that will remain uh, gaseous in gaseous form so in this manner we can easily separate the two gases in case of uh, nitrogen and oxygen uh, nitrogen will be liquefiable okay whereas oxygen will remain uh, it will remain in gaseous form okay so in this manner in this manner we can separate the two gases now come to principle of separation here uh, see the first one solid solid uh, mixture the nature of the mixture is heterogeneous and the example of this kind of mixture will be iron and sand now here we will be choosing the method of magnetic separation why because one of the substance one of the component of the mixture is magnetic substance as iron is magnetic substance so easily with the magnet we can separate this two so principle of separation will be iron being magnetic in nature gets attracted to a magnet Okay, so in this manner we will be uh, saying the principle of separation for each and every mixture now for the second one iodine and common salt this is heterogeneous again so as iodine will show sublimation but common salt will not show so sublimation is the method chosen to separate these two and uh, principle of separation will be iodine sublimes and uh, common salt will remain as it is okay it will not show sublimation next if we take common salt and sand this mixture then solvent extraction is the technique here uh, if we add water in this then common salt will get dissolved in it but sand will remain undissolved so common salt dissolves in water so we will be choosing the solvent extraction technique and the solvent chosen here is water next potassium nitrate and common salt if we need to separate these two then we have to choose fractional crystallization process because here potassium nitrate is more soluble than common salt if we add water if we take water as a solvent then common salt will be less soluble than potassium nitrate so we have to use this process fractional crystallization where potassium nitrate will if we uh, cool down the solution uh, after making uh, first we will be making a uh, saturated solution of potassium nitrate and common salt in water and then we will be cooling down the solution now when we will be cooling down the solution as potassium nitrate is more soluble so it will uh, comes out first from the solution so in this manner we have to repeat the process several times to get the to get back all the potassium nitrate from the solution so it will crystallize uh, the potassium nitrate will uh, crystallize out from the solution from the uh, solution of water potassium nitrate and common salt and then uh, we can get the common salt okay next solid liquid heterogeneous mixture clay and water this will be sedimentation and decantation as 
clay settles down as a sediment. It's heavy in weight, so clay settles down as a sediment. Next, uh, chalk and water. Here, chalk is uh, it's not heavy in weight. It's light in weight. So filtration is the process to separate this two. As chalk is obtained as a residue and water as a filter. As chalk particle or a chalk dust that is the that will float on water which is insoluble and float on water so uh, we can use the filtration process where we will be getting the chalk as a residue and water as a filtrant common salt and water evaporation is the technique uh, so here after evaporating the mixture common salt will remain in the evaporating dish as common salt is non-volatile uh, while water evaporates water will evaporate and it will form the water vapor where, whereas common salt will left behind in the evaporating dish as it is non-volatile but this same process we cannot use for uh, suppose uh, camphor and water or iodine and water because iodine will sublime so this is not a uh, proper way to separate but for common salt we can choose this process because common salt is non-volatile next solid liquid homogeneous mixture iodine and ethyl alcohol if this two will be mixed together then distillation is the process as ethyl alcohol will uh, form the vapor it will vaporize uh, and it will obtain it can be obtained as a distillate whereas iodine will be there in the container in the uh, task next kerosene oil and water as these are immiscible liquid so there will be two layers kerosene will form the upper layer as it is light in weight than water so separating funnel is the process by which we can separate these two and uh, the principle of separation will be they are invisible liquids forming two layers water forming the lower layer ok so by uh, if we open the tap the separating funnel then water will come out and that we can uh, collect in another beaker and the kerosene oil as it is light in weight so it will remain in the separating funnel and afterwards it can again be collected in another beaker next homogeneous mixture liquid liquid mixture ethyl alcohol and water as these two will form a miscible liquid so fractional distillation is the process where the two components differ in their boiling points. A boiling point of uh, ethyl alcohol is near about 78 degrees centigrade and water is 100 degrees. So here uh, we will not get the this two cannot be uh, totally separated in that manner but uh, a very good percentage of uh, this we can get. Okay. Ethyl alcohol will vaporize first and that can be collected in a in a, another container in another beaker as uh, after after that after uh, vapor, uh, getting the vaporized form of ethyl alcohol if we condense it we will be getting it in liquid form and water will remain in the in that uh, distillation flask the round bottom flask okay next liquid gas homogeneous mixture that is water and carbon dioxide just now we have discussed this by boiling we can separate solubility of carbon dioxide decreases on heating if we heat that if we heat the mixture then the solubility of carbon dioxide in water will be uh, it will decrease so that, that will be the principle for generally any gases this, uh, this is this principle we can use okay as uh, for any gases the solubility of gas uh, will decrease on heating okay next nitrogen and oxygen liquefaction is the process here two gases liquefy under high pressure at different temperatures oxygen and nitrogen these two gases will uh, 
liquefy uh, this two gases can be uh, these two gases are liquefiable uh, at, uh, at some different conditions we will say means uh, the different temperatures and different pressure okay so we can by uh, liquefaction we can separate this two So this is all for today, this uh, today's class, but now uh, we will be doing the worksheet which was given in the last class, okay. And uh, today's worksheet also you do properly and that we will be doing uh, again, we will be discussing that in our next class, okay. Now here you pause the video, you just go through the worksheet and all and uh, then come back we will be doing the worksheet okay go through the study material and then we will be doing the worksheet so this is this was given last uh, in the last class classify the following substances in the compound and mixture it's very easy we have to make two columns one for uh, compound and another for mixture then we will be writing the substance with uh, the compounds in the compound column and the mixture in the mixture column so carbon dioxide it is a compound so compound column we have to write it air it's a mixture water is a compound milk is a mixture common salt it's a compound blood it's a mixture fruit juice it's a mixture iron sulfide it's a compound okay so if you don't have pen and paper with you just uh, right here you pause the video and bring those next give one example for each of the following type of mixture solid solid homogeneous mixture this can be uh, solid solid homogeneous mixture can be alloys okay different alloys alloys are nothing but the mixture of uh, different uh, metals maybe say metal or maybe non metal also two or more different metals and non metals can be mixed together in a uh, in an alloy and that will be a homogeneous mixture solid liquid heterogeneous mixture it's very easy muddy water mud and uh, mud and uh, water or sand and water okay any any uh, substance which will uh, not get dissolved in water properly or like uh, uh, chalk dust and water you can write so any kind of solid liquid mixture we can write which is invisible which is uh, which will not uh, mix together properly next miscible liquids alcohol and water can be next liquid gas homogeneous mixture air we can write uh, no uh, tap water sorry liquid gas homogeneous mixture tap water or uh, you can write uh, ammonia in water so water is the liquid form and ammonia is the gas so ammonia in water that will be the liquid gas homogeneous mixture because ammonia will uh, easily get dissolved in water okay now uh, next suggest a suitable technique to separate the constituent for the following mixtures and also give the reason for selecting the particular method so salt from sea water evaporation is the process as water vaporizes but salt is non volatile so it will remain in the container in the evaporating dish ammonium chloride from sand as ammonium the principle will be ammonium chloride sublime okay so sublimation is the process so here to answer this kind of question you just make two columns uh, for one you will be writing the technique, separation technique and another will be 
the principle of separation. So for second one, ammonium and sand, technique is sublimation and the reason or the principle of uh, separation is ammonium chloride sublime. Next, chalk powder from water, this will be filtration because chalk will be, uh, it will remain as residue in the filter paper whereas water we will be getting as filtrate. Iron from sulfur, we can use uh, magnetic separation because iron uh, gets attracted by the magnet whereas sulfur remain as it is. Water and alcohol, this is miscible liquid so we have to use fractional distillation process. Okay. And uh, principle of separation will be for, uh, for this water and alcohol as they differ in their boiling points. So, uh, first alcohol will, uh, it will boil first and then water. The boiling point of alcohol is less than water so alcohol will boil first and then water so this is the principle of separation. Next, sodium chloride and potassium nitrate. So uh, here we will be taking the process of fractional crystallization as potassium nitrate a fractional crystallization is the process and the principle will be it's there only so uh, potassium nitrate dissolves faster uh, in water whereas sodium chloride will dissolve less okay next calcium carbonate and sodium chloride so how we will separate this two we can uh, for this two sodium chloride and calcium carbonate uh, this will be solvent extraction technique okay solvent extraction will be the process here yeah, sodium chloride get dissolved in water whereas calcium carbonate will remain as it is so after dissolving this we will be uh, filter it we will be filter the mixture calcium carbonate as residue we will be getting and sodium chloride dissolved in water we will be getting as filtrate. Now with the filtrate if we evaporate the filtrate we will be getting our sodium chloride. So this is the process. So principle of separation will be uh, sodium chloride dissolves in water whereas calcium carbonate remains undissolved and the principle uh, and the uh, separation technique will be solvent extraction technique okay so this is all for today students this is all for today so just uh, as you are doing i know you are uh, doing study properly at your home so just continue uh, doing that continue with same thing and uh, just uh, no need to worry about the exam and all now you just uh, as uh, we are doing that as we are doing the classes and we are doing the classes and uh, just uh, the study materials and all uh, along with the worksheets worksheets are very very much important you just uh, update it keep yourself updated and uh, just uh, do the worksheets regularly don't uh, keep it for the next thing. So, this is all. Uh, take care and keep studying. Okay, bye bye. Thank you.